people have been wanting telling people the, ladies and gentlemen the reason why that's happening because you can't see the the up here at the top of the screen you can't see Maybe it. you are not understanding there they is a ram booster and regulations hold on in now okay hey, i'm gonna e. tell you guys e. what i told the other hold guy on today now. when i was doing the consult so that you guys it can ain't letting me hold y'all alone let's go oh you know why? Because I keep no, doing that, ladies judge, and gentlemen. So I gotta open it. Okay, let me show you what now, I wanna let I'm you trying. Know. I'm trying to hit pause on the screen when the screen ain't the pause. The pause is down here. Now that's the video I just put up, y'all. Okay. I do realize something that my microphone is really loud to the point where y'all can hear the static in the background because it's so loud. So I'm gonna take down my microphone just a little bit. Because we ain't going to be that loud, y'all. Because uh, I'm black and I'm, I'm loud. Say it again. Okay? So, anyway. Um, your mama. Anyway, let me go ahead and let that just be... Let's just go ahead and shut this down, okay? There we go. Whew! Get that on out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, there's something that I, I wanted to take the time to explain. We got one more thing that we're going to tell you about this. That I didn't explain in the last video, and you will need to understand this to to fully grasp why you get to write promissory notes. I, I've I've explained it before, but people, y'all don't pay attention. Y'all y'all pay, but y'all just don't pay attention. Oh, by the way, I did eat, and I'm promising you, I want to eat more, but I'm full. And you know, you can't go past full. I, I tried, and so I ain't gonna go past full. Shoot, that junk was good though. Now. We're going to be right up in this area right here. Okay? I want y'all to pay attention. The last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. Now, again, I'm a little at a loss in the hurried way in which we had to read this bill to understand just how this new money is to be handled. I'm referring to Section 401. What's Section 401? Anybody know what Section 401 is? Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Where are you at, mouse? My mouse says, I, I, I ain't working with you. I ain't going to cooperate. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Section 401 that I read off in that video at the very beginning. This is Section 401, this highlighted section. Download the New Deal and see what Section 401 talks about and what the new money is. See, that's what they're talking about. That's why we highlighted these sections for you. So let me do it again. The last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. I'm a little at a loss in the hurried way in which we have to read this bill to understand just how this new money is to be handled. I reference section 401, which reads, upon deposit, pay attention with the Federal Reserve agent. Shh. We're reading section 412. That's what this section is. Upon deposit with the treasurer of the United States of America. Hold on, let me bring this up so y'all can see what the brother's talking about. He ain't my brother, he's somebody, brother. Upon deposit with the Federal Reserve agent, because they operate as the treasurer of the United States, of any notes under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations are deposited as collateral security and gold that's why they're collateral security because they are the new gold Shh. don't tell nobody that congress decided to redefine what gold was but they can't do anything other than gold and silver as legal tender and that's exactly what they did morons don't be calling me no moron well then how come you haven't gotten it you guys think that gold is that mineral that that, that comes out of the ground that you have to dig and mine for. No, Congress created a new gold. Pay attention. Deposited as security and gold for the Federal Reserve notes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the new gold. Those notes, your promissory note is the new gold. That's why it's collateral security. Go back and read section 412. That's why your note is collateral security. And where do you what do you do with your note? Along with the application. Do you not place it in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent? It's interesting. Mr. Stingle, can you tell them? 
Well, um, um, Section 412, we've added a lot of other words to it, but look at what it says. Uh, this provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve Bank notes. These were the circulating notes. Section 411 that was only supposed to be circulated between the banks. But then they switched it after this was passed to Federal Reserve notes. Now the new circulating notes. Go back and look at Section 411 and see that they're to be circulated amongst the reserve banks. You are a reserve bank. Shh, don't tell nobody. And the security back of it, the security, the gold, the security and gold for the reserve notes, the security backed of it is the obligation of new money, the notes, the drafts, the business of exchange, the bank's acceptances as outlined in the section. Remember, the new money is your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. That's why you just need an application, ladies and gentlemen. It is the new gold, but it's only the new gold when it applies to your necessities. If you follow their rules, call them, ask them for their rules. I'm still waiting for them to get back with me. They asked for an extension because I wrote the Federal Reserve after they sent me that junk. I wrote them back, and they wrote me back telling me that they needed an extension. They were asking for more time to figure out how to get around the way I asked my question. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be asking them, since your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, and trade acceptances are the new gold and security for the reserve notes, uh, if you place them in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent alone with an application, then how long does it take to get your money, your Federal Reserve notes? Because your items are the gold, the collateral security. How long will it take you to get your, your money? You guys keep, all of you are struggling, and I've given you what you need. You need to understand this document. This is your holy so-called grail. And you guys don't understand it. So those of you who are about to lose your home, you're losing it for nothing. We are going to $580 is what SACOM is going to be doing. And those of you who don't have any money and want to acquire some collateral with new gold, then take the contract that has the promissory note in it. Hold on. Let's take y'all there. Uh, you know what? I'm tired of these ignorant mother... I mean, these, these uh, stupid idiots who operate this country, who, who make it think like they're smarter. My God, they're not smarter than y'all. They only pretend that they're smarter. So SAA Limited. Dot com. The site that they keep messing with. And I haven't been here for a moment. So let's see if they messed with it again. Um, wait a minute. Come on. Really? No. Uh, uh let's let's refresh this. Like I said, the site they keep messing with, ladies and gentlemen, the first page is gone. <laughs> Literally. Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to go to the contract section. All right, we, we've got to, we've got to, I, I haven't been here. We haven't, SAA is in reserve, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go home. Yes, they got rid of our first page. It's here, but it's not here. Take a look. You see how long this is? So the first page is here, see? But the first page isn't here. The top portion isn't here. It's there, but it's not there. Imagine that. Okay, so we, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. We're, we're so sorry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that this has happened. Man, because so many people will think that there's nothing there. Oh, by the way, we don't keep any of your information. It's the hosting company that does that. But those terms and conditions are not theirs. Those are our terms and conditions. So we don't track your information. We don't store your information, and we don't just give it up to anybody. If they were to serve a subpoena, that subpoena would have to be ironclad because it will not be responded to. SAA is a, pay attention, a private foundational trust organization. Oh, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? It is unplugged. Um, Give me a second. What has happened is I have it plugged into a timer. And I apologize for one second. I'm going to see 
if we can plug my stuff back in so that I have some energy because, ladies and gentlemen, the timer that is plugged into, I have to reset it. <sighs> yeah, it's plugged into a timer, and it's not even supposed to be plugged into that. So let's go here to contract templates. If I am looking, and I can't tell you to do this unless you literally have an agreement. And by the way, before, when you clicked on this, you pulled up nothing. Now when you click on it, you will pull up this information, okay? I, I promise you, you will get an update on Bradley Christopher Stark and his people uh, shortly. The first thing you want to do is, if you got a mortgage, the first thing you want to do is come here. Now, what I have to do is I have to make this smaller. And I don't want to make it smaller because it's going to mess up everything. But appearances is all it's about. So we're going to take us down to medium. And we're going to take us down to 100. Okay. This is until I can get to SA and redo the site. So I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Now you see mortgage, equitable QWR. This has the coupon in it. Corporate contract has the coupon in it. Hold on a second. Get on out of my way. So let's say I have a problem with Amazon. Now I already have a contract with Amazon. They already received my agreement. They already received the information. Okay. Contract with others. Remember I told you guys how one guy took this information off of our site and started selling it on his site. What I didn't tell you is that he, after I warned him, I warned him, I said, Hey, I didn't give you permission to do that. You need to understand. I didn't give you permission to do that. And he ignored me. I told you, I believe everybody reads what they sow. Well, he was the one I helped get out of jail. Everybody reached what they saw. He spent a year, over a little bit over a year in jail. Not because I did something to him or anybody did something to him in regards to anything we did. No. You reap what you sow, ladies and gentlemen. You do somebody wrong, something wrong is going to happen to you. That's why I try as much as I could not to do wrong to anybody. I try to treat everybody fairly. I did all my wrong in the past, and I've had to suffer for it. So I make it a point not to cause any harm to anyone. I told somebody I was going to do a video explaining this, and I am. Ladies and gentlemen, there was um, a young man. He ordered a Sat Pack Plus. Now, that came with $70,000 in credits. And so he ordered the Sat Pack Plus. We completed his paperwork, and yet our people sent him the paperwork for the Sat Pack Prime. They made a mistake. He, he brought it to our attention because he was being honest. Honesty gets rewarded in this world, especially when it comes to me. Ladies and gentlemen, he says, uh, I can send it back to you and you guys can send me the correct paperwork. And I simply told him, no, we believe in truth and advertisement. We will honor the paperwork that was sent to you. So instead of $70,000 in tax credits, he received a million dollars in tax credits. Why? Because we, unlike what other people are trying to make us out to be, try to be reasonable with everyone. We try to keep our word on everything. Now, again, you know this contract already has the case law in it, but see, this also has money, what money is and what money isn't. Now, this, they got rid of this website, but it's okay because you can go the way back, okay, and pull it up. Now, that thing right there lets me know, give me one second. I don't see it. It's not here. This this is not the one. I thought this is the one with the coupon. You need the one with the coupon. And so I thought this was it. Everything in red, you have to replace. But this is not the one. So I'm trying to pull up the one, and I'll put it underneath this video, and I'll explain why. Let's see. I think this is it right here. Redemption coupon contract. This is it. The redemption coupon contract. That's this is it right here. Right, right. Oh, I didn't want to do two. What's wrong with you? Give me. Yeah, that's three. <laughs> I'm trying to right click. There we go. I want to copy link. And I'll get rid of those extra ones because I don't need three of these. Matter of fact, let's show in folders so I can get rid of the extra ones now.
copper yet. And so we're going to get rid of these two right here because I, I don't need them. I already have them. I'm doing this for y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with the equitable contract that I'm about to open, and remember, it has redemption coupon contract. That means it has the promissory note or bill of exchange already embedded in the contract. So let's say I have a student loan or a car loan, then this is the contract that I send them regarding that. Now you're gonna have to read this. It has to apply to you. Now, for instance, this is just explaining that government agencies, government can contract with people, and when they do, they lose any and all sovereignty, okay? And then this explains what money is and is not and what obligations of the United States are. Say so you are hereby notified that I hereby tender payment. What I'm going to suggest you do is with this, you also include their stupid application. Okay, but this is a tender of payment. And this one said Penny Mac, and that's what you do. Ladies and gentlemen, after you send this to the person, they have three days. And then you just wait a full 10 days. 10 days is your mark. Wait 10 days. That's all you got to see. Day Day. Man, Day Day and them, y'all, y'all, man, you don't mess with Day Day and them. Okay, wait 10 days. You have to change everything in red. So you can keep this number, just change it up. Don't keep the same number. Everything in red is what you have to change. So 80,000, if it was 180,000, you would add 100. If it was 20,000, you'd add 20,000. Okay, everything in red, you change. The caveat, I would not change unless you're changing this part right here. I would not change anything else because if you pay attention, the caveat is just a caveat. It lets them know their time frames. That is absolutely necessary in a contract. Absolutely 100%. And this is the one that tells them about their 10 days. This is your notification. This is your, this is what I'm agreeing to. Now I've met and I've seen, and I've looked at so many people adding so much junk to their contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, this document is already long but we shortened it up a lot. I want you to pay attention. Normally these documents are 98 pages long, 76 pages long. Ladies and gentlemen, this document is 12 pages long. That's how long this is. And when you add your information, it's still gonna be short. We add the information in here for your benefit. If you have a situation, if you have a situation, if you have a situation, add that situation, let them know what documents they have to supply. Keep it simple. Once you wait the 10 days, now you're right for arbitration. Ladies and gentlemen, once you get an arbitration award, and again, once you get an arbitration award, you wait 90 days. Why? Because the law says after 90 days, they cannot challenge it. Uh-oh. And if you guys only understood one other thing, I'm going to show you something because I, I know many of you don't understand it and I'm going to show it to you, but I, I can't stay on this um, all night. The other video just went up. Let's see. Expression of trust. No. Tender. Property beneficial. No. Response to presiding judge of the court. Petition request for redress. Proof via verified tender of payment of indebtedness. No. Where is the one... I did one where, uh-oh, that's way too far back. Now I got to go in my documents and find it because I did one where I document the judge and I gave it a title and now I don't remember what the title was that I gave it. But it documents that a judge, when a judge is overseeing a case, that a judge does not get to make any determinations. If they want to do a motion to vacate, they have to show in their motion to vacate why it's a motion to vacate okay i'm going to do you guys a favor uh those of you who stay around to the end of my videos and don't just watch the beginning i'm gonna do you a favor i'm gonna give you an easter egg okay uh give me one second dag nabbit it's got to be the petition for redress so give me a second to just open up the petition for redress let me close this and let me go to the petition for redress. Okay, this is the petition for redress that I did a video on and I showed you guys this. 
please understand, and this is what you guys who get these arbitration awards, you must really get this. We're not going to cover that one. That's not it. Watkins contends that Navarro does not control as the trusted issue in that case was not a party. Rather, it was a suit by the trustees raised in their own names. The court disagrees. Regardless of the name of the plaintiff's identity, it is the trustee who possesses the authority to manage the assets and to make decisions of the trust on the trust's behalf. Therefore, the trustee is the real party. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we will operate as trustee in the new SATPAC program. Please understand that. However, dealing with arbitration, many of you have been disappointed because the courts have been ruling against SAA. Let me tell you why they haven't been able to shut down SAA, because SAA hasn't been violating any laws. The Eighth Circuit Court tells you that they had no jurisdiction. Do not permit a party to contest the arbitration award by filing a complaint or an application to vacate arbitration award. They have to be a motion to vacate, and it is singular. It is not accompanying any other claims. Well, every suit they've attempted to bring against SACOM has been for everything else, and every single judge who has made a decision to deny were outside the jurisdiction where the award was had. The law says that they cannot do that. Under the Federal Arbitration Act, a party seeking to vacate an arbitration award must proceed by motion to the court. So many of you will not have to worry about anybody asking for a vacator of your arbitration award because they don't understand the process. None of these lawyers understand the process. You do. So that's why you get the arbitration. You cannot do it without paying a fee to the arbitrator. Ladies and gentlemen, then if you don't pay a fee to the arbitrator, if you just do it without paying a fee to the arbitrator, then your collusion, your conspiracy, you're doing it for this, to that, don't stop it. Don't do yourselves that way. Section 9 of the FAA provides that when presented with an application to confirm an arbitration award, the court must grant. It's not an application. It's a motion to confirm. But the court must grant unless it's vacated previously. Neither erroneous legal conclusions or unsubstantiated fact-finding justifies the federal court review of an arbitration award. Go and look at all the decisions they made against SAA and see how the judge sat up there and claimed that they had some gobbledygook and it was nonsensical and all this other stuff, but they never specified what was gobbledygook and what was nonsensical. Rather, grounds for vacating an arbitration award are limited. In interesting, ain't it? Now let's do the 90 days. Where is the 90 days? Oh, three months. There it is right there. Three months equates to 90 days, not 32 days. Three months equates to 90 days. The Pennsylvania Act and the Federal Arbitration Act, United States Arbitration Act, requires the following of a motion to vacate within three months of the award issuance. But they've known this for quite some time, 90 days. So once you wait the 90 days, then forgive the debt. Get your credits. Move on. Record your credits on your taxes. They can't stop it. Why? Why can't they stop it, ladies and gentlemen? Why can't they stop you from documenting legitimate taxes? Credit. Why can't they stop you? Because you controlled the new money. You tendered a payment. It's in the contract. They are in default. So now you have a secondary item known as an award. This new money is your credit. That's why. Wait, you guys still don't get it? I know I'm, I'm listening to you. I can hear you. I can hear your brains twisting and turning. Man, that don't make no sense to me. So hold on. Let me take you to page 83. Page 83? What's on page 83? Under the new law, the new money is issued to the banks. Federal Reserve notes. Well, technically, hold on. The new money is issued to the banks. Your drafts, notes, bills of exchange, in return for government obligations. Bills of exchange, draft no trade acceptances, bank acceptances. The money will be worth 100 cents on the dollar, so your promissory note is worth 100 cents on the dollar. Why? 
because the government, their junk is now backed by your credit. The only problem is even though you already have the credit, you have to now justify where the credit is coming from. The credit is coming from the debtors. That's why you forgive your debtor. You forgive them of their debts. 1099A, 1099C. 1099A, 1099C, you are the creditor in that exchange. They are the debtor. All you need is a social security number. I mean, not social security number, EIN number. They're the debtor. You're the creditor. And you do your 1099Cs. Keep it, keep it honest, keep it real, keep it to the numbers. If you had an arbitration award and your arbitration award did not get granted and the court had no justification for vacator, then do your tax credits, forgive them of the debt. Get your tax credits, people. Get your money. Okay. It will represent a mortgage on all the homes and other property of all the people. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what's backing your junk. It's all of your property. That's your collateral. That's why your instruments have collateral because they're backed by the credit of a nation, which represents a mortgage on everything you own. That's why your instruments have value. So if you're not paying attention, that's why we incorporated a, uh oh, gotta go up more, promissory note inside the instrument. So the remedy provided by government for discharging a government obligation is 12 USC 411 and 412. That's the remedy. It's always been a remedy. Y'all need to pay attention, honestly. So let's say, well, how do you think I did everything, ladies and gentlemen? I had these grievances, these gripes with these agencies, these corporations, and the only thing I did, and I want y'all to pay attention because some of y'all are not going to get this, is I sent them a contract. Not a single one of them responded. Why? Because they don't respond to your paperwork. And when I sent them the contract, the contract had two clauses. Hey, you got three days. And if you elect to opt out of this agreement, you can, but you're still obligated under law to provide these documents. So if you opt out of the agreement and you don't provide the documents, then that is a sure sign of you complying with the agreement. That's basically what it's saying. So it's a catch-22 for them. Either you supply the information being requested or you opt out and supply the information being requested. If you don't supply the information being requested and you attempt to opt out, you thereby opt in by having an obligation and duty to respond. They don't have a choice. That's what Bradley Christopher Stark did. That was different than what everybody else was doing. He added an arbitration clause and in the arbitration clause in the caveat, he gave them no choice. He gave them a catch-22 situation. You can opt out of this agreement, but you still are obligated to supply the information. And by supplying the information, you commit conduct and act and are in action under the agreement, thereby binding you to the agreement. Oops. That's what they can't stand about the agreements, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they'll say they're gobbledygook. Let's see if we can see some gobbledygook. We're going to read just this instrument right here. The above United States government obligation is hereby accepted and acknowledged, and I do assign and pledge the total value of the obligation to the United States of America through the United States Department of the Treasury to be redeemed for value, see, A for V, and receivable at the Federal Reserve or the Federal Reserve Bank or at any member bank or at any national association as prescribed by statute. March 9, 1933 Act, the March 12, 1933 Act, 12 USC 411 18 USC 8, UCC 1 3 and 3-419. And the limitations of the United States and, and the intentions of the United States Congress, the current serious national emergency and credit it to the grantor's account. Ladies and gentlemen, what's gobbledygook about that? I'm quoting 411. I wrote that. That was me. This was all my writing. So what's unsensible about that? Hold on. Let's take this right here so that you guys will see that the courts want to say gobbledygook. Let's, let's get out of here. Let's take this. Copy. Yeah, I really should be asleep right now, 
but we're going to keep myself up for a minute just for y'all, just so I can give you guys this information. We can close that. We don't need it open. And for here, let's do that. I put equitable redemption coupon. Look at that. Had to accept the defendant's equitable redemption coupon. This is somebody using one of the equitable redemption coupons that I provided. So we don't want that equitable redemption coupon and government obligation redemption, uh, remittance coupon. Okay, these are people using my coupons. Okay, and each one of those, because it was called equitable redemption coupon, they kept the same word. And this is probably one of my videos, but it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, this is not mine. This is somebody else putting the video up regarding the equitable redemption coupons. What I want is the definition. So pay attention under equitable redemption coupons. This is benefits as obligations of the United States. Money remaining after payments such as expenses shall be deposited into the general fund of the United States Treasury. Then it says payment remittance coupon. You're going to see equity, the courts operate in equity. Redemption, people have the right to redeem. And coupon, coupon is a form of payment. That's all y'all got to know. Got to know, got to know, got to know. Okay. Uh, equitable redemption coupon. So now I just got, oh, equitable remittance coupon. That's my fault. I said redemption. Well, there's two. I also did remittance coupon. So a redemption coupon, remittance coupon. So we're going to do remittance coupon, and I need definition. Remittance, remittance, coupon book, remittance slip, payment which may be accompanied by a pre-printed printed coupon indicating an account number, a date, and a purpose, or by an individual prepared slip, individually prepared slip, which indicates the account, the invoice, paid, trade, discount paid, or returns. There is no gobbledygook about what that contract was intended to do. Ladies and gentlemen, what you all need to understand is that at this organization, you're not paying for any of these documents, especially this one right here. You're not paying for any of these. This is a way for you guys to, you're not creating the tax credits. The default by the other party is creating the tax credits. And they don't have any other choice but to default because they will never provide you the lawfully requested information which they are lawfully required to provide so we have the infant estate contract which deals with your infant trust which is a matter of probate and you can settle that account at any time you just got to follow the instructions got the incarceration contract those people who are in jail look you might as well get them their tax credits now until we can get in the court and get their contracts recognized but do it now before they change the law the right to travel, many of you are running into problems with these agencies and everything. Pay them with the tax credits. Offset the debt. Create the contract and then offset the debt with them. Don't make it outlandish. Okay, don't make it for millions of dollars on a traffic ticket. Do it for forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Bond the case with your contract. Contracts have value. Say what? Contracts have value. No, you joking. C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T-S-H. Oh, boy, I made a mistake. Sorry. H-A-V-E. V-A-L-U-E. Question mark. Google what you say. Contract value. Everything you need to know. Up counsel. These are attorneys. Contract value. Or the total contract value is what the contract is worth over its lifetime. If calculated correctly, Total contract value helps you put up a viable defense. <sighs> the contract value is essentially the price tag that the government contract is worth in terms of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are not understanding what was given to you. You were given, I'm sorry, wrong one. You were given contracts. This is not the value of the contract. Hold on. I think I went too far. You've gone too far again, sir. Well, I, I, I ain't going far enough. I done stands all I can stands. This section is the total value of the contract. 
not the section on the coupon. Now, like I said, don't get outlandish. You get outlandish, and no arbitrator can give you an award that doesn't match the circumstances. Stop being greedy. Match the circumstances. What are you saying? You're saying the previous awards didn't match the circumstances? They matched it 100% because there's no money. But now that you guys understand that your junk is now the new money, you can't bankrupt the United States by just throwing outlandish numbers out there. Trillions of dollars. One person tried to do that. That's not the way the system works. Did you do yours for trillions of dollars? Nope. Kept mine in a hundred millions. Why? Because we have several cases. I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing any more contracts with anybody. We we capped all of my contracts on my email address. All of them are capped at $4 million per incident, per issue. Why $4 million? Because $4 million is reasonable. Okay? $4 million is reasonable. All right. I said I was going to give you guys some information. I'm trying to remember what it is, and I apologize. Oh, yes. I remember now. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. But we just passed it right on by. Yes, we did. It became one of my greatest records. Oh, Betty, the late Betty Wright. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking for this right here. Say what? Oh, that's right. I did. I changed the name. Because the name wasn't the correct name. So I changed it. I don't want that one. I need to open this one. Come on now. Hurry on up. Because we're moving on up. Moving on up to the east side. To a deluxe apartment. Do you see this right here? It's 12 USC 412. Application for notes. And I didn't put the whole thing here. Only the part that matters. Any. Anytime you see any with Federal Reserve Bank, that includes you. It's not specific, and when it's not specific, it includes member banks, and member banks includes any bank. So any Federal Reserve Bank may make an application to the Federal Reserve agent. This is what the act was talking about, giving the Federal Reserve agent your application for, I need some money, some Federal Reserve notes, for such amount of Federal Reserve notes here and after provided, here and before provided, as it may require, as you may require. That's the it, okay? Such application shall be accompanied with a tender. Pay attention, you guys. I told you you were going to get your Easter egg. Such application will be accompanied with the tender. Love me tender. Love me sweet. And if you find a tender only that is right for you. Make it essential. Giving you love. Tender. To tender a contract to a player is to agree to give the contract to the upcoming season to a player who is under club control. Ladies and gentlemen, what is tender or tendering? It is defined as the invitation to submit a bid for a project Government or other entity normally put out calls for contractor. Ah, but see, that's not the tender we're looking for, ladies and gentlemen. We're not looking to tender a contract. Let's do money. Tender is to unconditionally offer money or performance to meet an obligation. The term most commonly arises in the context of contractual sales of goods. Isn't that interesting? It, it's an unconditional tendering of money a tender may be of money oh tender is an offer to do or to perform an act which the party offering is bound to perform to the party to whom it is made oh that sounds all right well let's go ahead and find out so the application shall be accompanied with a tender or payment fulfilling your obligation you have to give them a promise fulfilling your obligation you have to give them a promise Fulfilling your obligation, you have to give them a promise to the local Federal Reserve agent. I did that at closing of the collateral. Collateral? What type of collateral? Security. And the amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes that's applied for. An issue pursuant to such application. The collateral security. See, told you, collateral is security. Thus offered shall be notes. So you got to stop at notes. Now, the contract has a bill of exchange, ladies and gentlemen. This is the collateral that's offered. Wait a minute. Wait till you guys hear this. 
the court wants to bond you, then give them collateral security. Give them a bond backed by your promissory notes. What are you going to back it with? Y'all want to pay attention to this? Your tax credits! I apologize. My bad. That's your collateral, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Let me show y'all something. Because y'all y'all can't see it. It's, it's hidden from y'all view. So we're going to blue this. In order to enjoin or set aside a foreclosure sale, the debtor must make a valid and viable tender of the indebtedness. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do this the right way. Many of you guys are going to guess because you are not going to want to pay to have it done the right way. We're not going to tell you how to do this. But I've tried to tell all of you the reason why many of you are being kicked out of your home and the reason why many of you have lost your homes because you've never tendered payment. You show up there by saying, No! I don't know them! You can't get my ass from me! <laughs> and you lose. Because you don't know what you're doing. Okay, I'm showing you this to let you know that this is what SACOM is going to be doing for people. This is what we're going to be doing for people on an average, on a regular, on a basis. And you all need to understand one thing because you all need to get it. A valid and viable tender of payment of the indebtedness owing its essential to an action to cancel a voidable sale under a deed of trust. You need tender. You need a valid and viable tender in order to cancel a deed of trust. The rationale behind this rule that if the plaintiff could not have redeemed the property, had the sale procedures been proper, any irregularities in the sale did not result in damages to the plaintiff. Isn't that interesting? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what SACOM is going to be doing. This is information I'm giving to this group right here, the people who are listening to this video. Why? Because you guys will be the first persons we do this with. Like I told you, nobody's done it before. It's right there in the law. Hold on. Hold on. Make sure you guys get it because you guys, you definitely don't understand it. We're going to come right here. As a matter of fact, we're not even going to come here. Hold on. We're going to come up here. This is on appeal. The appellant fourth point alleges error in the appellee. Neither pled tender of payment or of the purported debt nor tendered the same during trial. Though the mortgager must, under most circumstances, pay or tender payment to be entitled to recourse, the record gives minimal support to the appellant's contention in this fact situation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why all of you lose your homes. It's not enough to tender payment. I'm not going to tell you what's required. This is what we're going to be doing for people. Okay? Just letting you know. I can show you these laws all day long. I've been talking about this since 2012. Look, I just haven't had the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to do so many other things. And so I told you, SACOM had to get rid of its, uh, not get rid of, had to take care of all of its stat packs. That's why we're not doing the, uh, what you call it anymore. We're not doing any more securities in that format. No more SAP packs. But we are doing mortgages. We are helping people take care of their mortgages. And we're going to use the law. Okay? I'll explain more as the days come. But I told you, by October 12th, October 15th, that program will be up and running. There, there are people who are asking, can they work for SACOM? The... Offer for AmeriLegion, this is this is why AmeriLegion is there, to help do exactly what we're talking about now. But many people are misunderstanding AmeriLegion, and we'll put out videos explaining a little bit more about AmeriLegion soon. Okay? Trust me on that. I haven't lied to any of you thus far. I've had people accuse me of trying to take money from people. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea. How many people call me and I give them information for free? Because that is me. They're saying I'm trying to swindle people. They're calling me a fraud. And they're saying that I am trying to do this and trying to do that. But not one single person can accuse me of that. Go ahead. Go ahead and find one. I'll put them on video with me and them talking. Go ahead. Since 1998, nobody can accuse me of doing them wrong. Go ahead. I dare them. And I'll show you a liar. 
You see, ever since I put myself in a situation where I had to pay, I made sure I didn't do anything else wrong because I don't want to reap anymore. I'm tired of reaping. See, you reap what you sow. As I told you about the guy who spent over a year in jail, you reap what you sow. He didn't reap because he with us. He reaped because that's his life. That was his course of habit. He had to pay a price for that. Look, the God I serve says he is not one to be mocked. He says that he will not be mocked, and nobody understands that's how he can prove that he's God. You know, that's the theory of relativity. That ain't the theory of nobody's relativity. Well, that's karma. That is nobody's karma. He said you reap what you sow before anybody came up with that junk. Go ahead. It was documented him telling people they were going to reap what they sow before anybody was documenting no karma and no other junk. Talking about, oh, well, we came up with this. This is our theory. How can you have a theory when you bite or take it from someone else? Karma and all that stuff, they took that from Jehovah. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what God you serve. That ain't got nothing to do with me. You're going to have to live with that. I don't care if you believe that Jesus is God when you know that that's an impossibility. I know, I know, I know you, you've convinced yourself that Jesus and God are the same person. You know what the only problem with that is? You guys understand what the problem with someone claiming that Jesus is God on this planet is? Go ahead. Go ahead. You can't describe how it is. You can't explain how it is. You'll say it's a mystery. You'll say it's this or that. As I told you, God can not die. Jesus died. I don't care if he died figuratively. It doesn't matter. It's still death. God can't die. He is energy. You can't destroy energy. Man, he is energy with intelligence. Everybody want to say he's the universe. <laughs> no, he's not the universe. He created the universe. How can you be that for which you created? The Bible says Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. Go ahead. Colossians 1.15, the firstborn of all creation. Well, if he's God, how can he be born? How can he be the firstborn of all creation? Because if he was born, that means there had to be a cause. Go ahead. It's called the Big Bang Theory. There has to be a cause. In order for there to be an event, that's the IRS. The IRS works on that principle. In order for there to be an event, there had to be a cause for the event. So you have to be willing to explain the cause. And none of you can. Well, Jesus and God are the same. Yeah, they are. Just like a husband and wife are the same. Not the same person, but on the same page. But it's okay. I know, I know, I know. People have convinced themselves. The Bible doesn't say Jesus and God are the same. Yes, it does. John 1.1. 1, 1. Really? Then where's the Holy Spirit? No, no, no. Where's the Holy Spirit? No, 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 no. Hold on. Where's the Holy Spirit? If the Holy Spirit is God, how can God fill people with his Holy Spirit? Go ahead. How can he anoint people with his Holy Spirit? Jesus says, I'm sending you a helper. He didn't say, I'm sending you myself. Go ahead. All you who want to hold on to that, it's all right. I can't fault you. I would believe the same thing if that's all I knew. If I wasn't as logical as I am. See, nobody taught me anything. I read for myself, people showed me what the scripture said. And when I saw a contradiction, here's my thought. And I'm just going to be honest with you. If my God, the God that I serve, is the only true God, then he's not going to lie to me. He's not going to contradict himself. He has no reason to lie because the only reason why people lie is because they are afraid. My God wouldn't be afraid of anything. There would be no reason for him to be afraid. Then we have these people who, they believe in all these other gods that are just created out of nowhere. Go ahead. The Grecians, they're gods out of nowhere. At one point, they didn't exist, but all of a sudden, then they did exist. It's supposed to be so powerful, but we ain't seen none of them man since. Okay? Zeus, Hercules, Hermes, where are they? Oh, those are the Marvel brothers. Yeah, they just they the Avengers and everything and Avengers and I'm watching the Avengers assembled right now. 
I really am impressed with Avengers Assembled. It is, I'm not even watching any regular shows right now. It's just me and the Avengers Assembled because that little stupid cartoon has my attention. But as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry that so many people don't want to listen, don't want to hear, that they're so stuck. They think they're right. Well, you think you're right. No, I don't think I'm right. Everything I talk about, I show people. Everything I just said, the people who know scripture know that the scriptures say about Jesus, Colossians 1.15, that he is the firstborn of every creation. And then Jesus is wisdom personified, Proverbs the 8th chapter, where it says that he was the beginning of God's creative works. In Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image. If God and Jesus was a duity or a triune God, then we would be three persons in one ourselves. Well, we got a spirit in us. Well, if we had a spirit inside of us, then it would be impossible because if that spirit was immortal, then that means that Adam is still alive in some sense. That means God lied because he told Adam the day you eat from this tree is the day you will positively die. Well, if Adam is still alive somehow, then God lied. If Eve is still alive somehow, God lied, which means he is not the true God, which means that he's a lie. But there's nothing in the scriptures, nothing in existence to document Adam still being alive somehow. Or Eve. But we know the flood happened. Jesus fulfilled over 300 prophecies. And yet, people want to say he didn't exist. People want to say that Jesus did not come from heaven, that he was not part of the what the Catholics call immaculate, immaculate conception. They call it immaculate. I, I understand the word, but it wasn't nothing immaculate to it. We have artificial insemination. Wasn't known back then, but it's known today. Sperm and an egg come together? Hey, you can do that in the laboratory. So why couldn't God do the same thing? Where do you think they got the idea from to do that in the first place? But y'all don't get it, do y'all? You think they came up with that on their own? No, they got the idea from that situation right there. Remember, Jesus wasn't the only child promise. You had Hannah, and why can I think of her husband's name? Eliakim. Eliab, is Eliakim, Eliab, I, I can't think of, man, I'm so upset that I can't think of Hannah's husband's name, but the two of them, and Samson, or we can go to John, the one referred to as John the baptizer, that woman was so old, there ain't no way in the world she should have been bringing up a child, that's why he grew up in the wilderness, because his parents died while he was just becoming of age, imagine that. Grew up in the wilderness. That's where he lived. I promise you, John was so unique. It was, it would have been a pleasure meeting that young man, in, in my opinion. And it will be a pleasure meeting him because the Bible promises him, promises him and others a resurrection. All right. I end this with this to let you guys know. The remedy has always been in front of you. You guys just haven't been seeing it. All of the information that I've been giving you guys, I get it because I talk to Jehovah. Jehovah is my God. I serve him. Now, I can prove that the information comes from him and that it is unlike any other. Go ahead and listen to any of the other videos and see if anybody's talking about the stuff I'm talking about. Go ahead. Go back five years, listen to all of my videos, any of my videos, and see if anybody's talking along the line that I'm talking. If they're talking along the understanding. But hold on. My brain was fried. This is your brain on drugs. Okay. 126 degrees. 18 minutes. In a coma. And I'm here. And I'm sorry to say this because it depresses me. But I'm the smartest person I know. That's not me patting myself on some stupid back. That's me saying things for the way that they are, and it shouldn't be that way. Everybody should be doing circles around me. But people come to me for information. What they don't realize is I don't study this stuff. The only thing I'm doing right now, I'm not studying this stuff. I'm explaining this to you guys. I'm telling you what it's saying. 
but some of you, it's taking so long for you to get it that that's why I can't move forward. That's why I have to stay here in this spot until you guys catch up. So SACOM is getting ready to help people with mortgages. Sorry it took us so long, but we had some other obligations we had to take care of. Ladies and gentlemen, I really, really, really am trying to help people. And if you all can't see that, but I can't do it because I can't finish my own things. Now that we start this new program, I ain't going to be able to do nothing for myself. That's the problem. But see, if I take time to do stuff for myself, everybody, too many people are going to lose their home. Why don't I just give the information away? Because too many people will take advantage of the people. That's why. Look, I've spent the last seven weeks trying to figure out a surefire way. And it wasn't until this afternoon that I figure out, and I just, like I said, I went over it with several people, and I said, what can they do about it? You know, that's that was my response. What can they do to stop it? You know, it's because of all the things that we're going to be implementing. What can they do to stop it? We're going to be following the law. So uh, this is not no pipe dream. We cannot guarantee you anything because, remember, they don't like me. But I guarantee you, nobody's going to be able to give you a better position to be in. Nobody's going to be able to give you a better position to be in. So if you're just about to face foreclosure, I'm sorry. The one thing I can do, if you haven't been foreclosed on yet, call the bank and ask them for a loan modification. That should buy you about 45 more days. By that time, we'll be ready for you. All of you who are going through foreclosure proceedings, even if you don't have the money to make your monthly payments, you should be saving money. Even if you don't have the money to make your monthly payments, you should be saving money. All of you who have these credits, you should be creating instruments like a bond and backing your bond with your credits, documenting your credits by doing the taxes. Put it on your Schedule C. There are other forms where you document taxes. Remember, you don't need to show them the paperwork. If they ask where did they come from, you can tell them the organization the credits came from. That's all your, uh, what do you call that person? CPA needs to know. That's all your tax preparer needs to know is the name of where it came from. You guys have that on the instrumentation. You have the uh, taxpayer ID number on your paperwork. You guys are trying to prove this and prove that because you don't understand the paperwork. So stop trying to understand it. Stop trying to understand it. Recognize one thing, that the credits are viable. Why? Because nobody ever challenged them, not in court and not at arbitration. No judge has ever vacated a single award that was done by my person within the three-month period. Pay attention. Period. And as long as those awards weren't vacated, then that means they are viable by the arbitrator. You might want to say it was on the private side because these are private arbitrations. They are not judicial. You take them on the public when you go into court to ask to get them confirmed. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the process. That's why the credits are viable. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to take this to an hour. I know we're getting close because my timer stopped and... What I just did is I see it right now in less than a minute. I wasn't trying to do an hour, but I did promise you some Easter eggs, and I hope that some of you understood. There they go. So my hope is that you guys will understand the nature of this information, and you'll be able to put the pieces together. Ladies and gentlemen, I got work to do. I hope you all understand that I'll try to give you what I can. When it comes to the organizations, I can't give you anything because that's proprietary information. But when it comes to giving you some sort of relief, I will give you what I can. Take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Have a good life, everybody. I'm out of here.